Rishinga Maharaj, please come. Close friend of His Holiness Tamala Krishna Maharaj. And uh, not only that, but uh, he worked as an ally in his area for many, many, many years. Philippines and uh, China, all these places. And Maharaj is still serving in those areas. Hare Krishna. Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pastaya Bhutale Srimati Bhaktivedanta Swami Iti Namane Namaste Sarasati Devi Gauravani Pricharine Nirvishesha Sanyavadi Paschachadesha Tarine Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pastaya Bhutale Srimati Tamau Krishna Goswami Iti Namane Vanchakaupa Tarubhyas Jakripa Sindhu Bhai Vacha Patita nam pavani pyo vaishna vipyo namo namaha. Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasade Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare I don't think of myself as a close friend of Tamal Krishna Goswami, but I'm a, maybe a, a close servant. I did have the opportunity to be under his direction for about 20 years. He departed 2002, early 1980s I came to him. I had been serving under different GBCs one after another they had spiritual difficulties and it was very disheartening to see them and I thought that this is a person that if I work for him I don't think he will have any spiritual difficulty he's a very powerful personality Prabhupada had said of him Tamal Krishna Goswami can walk through fire and he had to do that often. Often people would sometimes, because he was a, such a special devotee and such a, he was on such a important position within our society as one of the very eminent leaders of the society. So people tend to criticize, they will find faults, they will, you know, they will look at something and they will magnify it, make it big. They'll, but some, you know, like Tamal Krishna Goswami like very much to have very nice prasadam. So sometimes people would call him, he's a gourmet sannyasi. <laughs> but whenever he would take prasadam, he, he wouldn't take a loan. He would always invite devotees to come and sit with him and take prasadam with him. He liked company, he liked to be with devotees. He would have different people come different days. He'd have a schedule with different devotees to come and take prasadam with him. And when he would come to Hong Kong, we'd have all the devotees who are serving there also. All the men would come and sit with him, take prasadam together. So he liked very much the association of devotees. He did have some devotees who he was very fond of. People like uh, Govinda Maharaj, Shivaram Swami especially, Giridhari Swami, they were much more intimate with him. Of course, Giri Raj Swami also. Uh, I have the good fortune that he gave me sannyas. Giri, Giri Raj Maharaj also took from Tamal Krishna Goswami and Giri Hari Swami also. So I was after them. So that was my good fortune. He gave me this sannyas. At the time, he told me, don't shave your head. You know, usually, well, you know Lord Chaitanya took sannyas to shave the head. But he told me, you don't shave your head. 
that you're going to China. <laughs> so at that time in China, you know, I was young. This was 20 years ago, more, when I took Sinya. So uh, I had a good head of hair. Nowadays, I don't have much hair. <laughs> But in those days, I had more hair, you know. But he told me, don't shave your head. You're going to China. <laughs> so, uh, you, if you see the picture, I took sannyas. I, I took sannyas here in Mayapur uh, with uh, Bhakti Chaitanya Swami and Radha Govinda Goswami, the three of us. And so, they, you know, I'm the one with the hair. <laughs> Very unusual to take sannyas and still have hair, you know. But he said, no, you're going to China. That's why. So I said, okay. No. <laughs> and you won't need a danda. Where are you going? They said, no, we'll get him a danda in pieces. Tamal Krishna Maharaj said, they will find it. <laughs> so, no danda either. <laughs> no, he gave me a danda, the sannyas. But he said, leave it here in Mayapur. You don't take it to China. You won't need it in China. And so, this was uh, Tamal Krishna Goswami, very, very powerful personality, very, you know, just being near him. I tremble in my shoes. <laughs> very, very powerful. <laughs> because, I, you know, I always do things wrong, you know, so I always worry, you know, you'll find out what I've done wrong. Beyond, you shout at me, or <laughs> so I, I, I tended to stay a, a bit away from him. Didn't get too close. But Prabhu here, he had a very nice, intimate relationship with Goswami Mar. China, Hong Kong was his his zone. You know, he wasn't given much of a zone. At one point, he was ruling practically the whole of America with the Radha Damodar party. But many of you may know, or if you don't know, then read the Lila Amritas, particularly Vyasaki's book is very good about this, Radha Damodar Vilas. And you can read also Satsvarupa Goswami about what happened. There was some conflict between the Brahmachari Sannyasis and the Grihastas. Yeah, a little, little bit, bit conflict there. there. <laughs> and at that time, many devotees were staying in the temple, and often householders were running the temple. And they needed money to maintain the temple in those days. Money was coming from book distribution. So if a temple had a good collector, then it's very important for the maintenance of the temple. So sometimes, the you know, people would want to leave the temple and go and join Radha Damodar, go and travel with Tamal Krishna Goswami and the other sannyasis who were there with the Radha Damodar party. And those, of course, Vishnu Jan Swami for some time there. Like that. So it was very attractive. You know, why stay in the temple, same place, same spots every day? For Sankirtan, you can go with Radha Damodar and travel around everywhere. And, you know, all the big book distributors are there. We can get association with them. So many people wanted to join with Tamal Krishna Maharaj and his party. And, and it became a problem. And then, of course, Prabhupada had said, I'm taking it all away from you and you go to China. And so Tamal Krishna Maharaj was not. <laughs> so inspired to go to China. Difficult. Those days, China especially is not China as we know it today. You know, China today is very, uh, is very well developed. Everything has been built. Superstructures, high fast trains connecting all the cities. Airports, huge airports everywhere. And, you know, it's very uh, powerful economic country. But in 1970s and 80s, when Tamal Krishna Maharaj, when Prabhupada told Tamal Krishna Maharaj to go to China, it was closed practically. Nobody could go. And it was a, a real challenge how to do it. You know, if 
I went to China more than 30 years ago, 30 years ago now, so I remember how it was then. And Tamal Krishna Maharaj went before that, so he saw it in the very primitive, undeveloped economically. But he took up the challenge that Prabhupada wants him to do this, and he organized us how to do it. He organized us that from Hong Kong, we would, we would go to the train station and we would get all the people who were going back to China, particularly like at Chinese New Year, there's a big, there was a, in those days there was a big rush of people going out of Hong Kong, going back to China. And we'd give them all books. And Maharaj had arranged special books, a Krishna book printed with Chinese and English. And the idea was, you know, that people want to learn English, we'll give them these books. And so, learn English. And we would give them this little pocket Krishna book with some Krishna stories in it, in Chinese and English. And we would go in and we would give out books, often freely. And it did, it certainly had its effect. As Prabhupada had told Tamal Krishna Goswami, even if you can't go, you send the books, and the books will create the preaching field there. So one man, he actually got a book, he got a book coming back, and when he got it, he wrote to us, and he said, I want to help, I want to help you spread this knowledge all over China. And he did, the man helped us for a while. After some time he got arrested. <laughs> you know, these things happen in China. You know, we don't worry. Tamal Krishna Maharaj himself was doing a program in Shanghai. He had uh, Sankirtan Prabhu, who has already left this world. He's gone to continue his preaching with Tamal Krishna Maharaj somewhere. I mean, Sankirtan Das and one other devotee were in Shanghai and they arranged a big program in a big university in Shanghai. And it was a very successful program. We'd do a little yoga, we'd twist the body, show some positions, and then we say, that's one type of yoga. How many of you can do this? No, nobody could do it. Okay, we have another yoga for you. And we teach them how to chant Hare Krishna, and then introduce the Maha Mantra and give everybody books. Very nice program. Hundreds of people, big auditorium, all students. So Maharaj did that program and very everybody was very satisfied, very happy. But the next day the police came <laughs> and the, the devotees got sent back to Hong Kong. You have to leave China. You can't do this. You have to leave China. So Tamal Krishna Goswami also, you know, he was in the front lines with us. He wasn't sitting back in his office. He was in the front lines. He went out with us and he also got arrested with the police there. And, but he was happy, you know, to come and do some preaching in China. Maharaj Tamal Krishna Goswami told me one time, he said, he was talking, he said, if I ever have any problems, he said, I will just go to Mayapur and Jaipataka Maharaj will take care of me. So Jaipataka Maharaj and Tamal Krishna Maharaj, they had very intimate relationship. They loved each other very much and they both served intimately under the direction of Srila Prabhupada. So, I don't like to talk anymore. Let Tamal Jaipataka Maharaj is here. He can speak much better. Thank you very much. Srila Tamal Krishna Goswami Maharaj Ki. Jai. Solina